Have you ever wondered if there was a pattern to when, why, and where oddities spawn? Well, Orange Wizard has you covered with this nifty little graphic right here, and I'm here to talk about it with you guys. And since WB has come out and said that nothing in this game is by accident, we are also going to be consulting the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them guide, since most of these oddities are in fact beasts. So for some of these, we may be able to see that there is in fact a why as to when and where they spawn. So additionally, while we are consulting the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them book, I am also going to be including the Ministry of Magic classifications for each one of the beasts that are included in the book. Beings are not included in this, just beasts, so keep that in mind. So when we get to things like vampires, um, they're not going to be in the book. But I'm going to be reading you a little section out of the book just to give you an idea of what these classifications mean because I think it's kind of fun and interesting to know. So it says the Department for the Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures gives classifications to all known beasts, beings, and spirits. These offer an at-a-glance guide to the perceived dangerousness of a creature. The five categories are as followed. Classification five means it's a known wizard killer, impossible to tame or domesticate. Classification four means dangerous, requires specialist knowledge or a skilled wizard may handle. And then classification three, we have competent wizards should cope. Classification two, harmless, may be domesticated. And classification one, boring. <laughs> so keep these classifications in mind as we talk about some of these beasts. So if you take a look at Orange Wizard's graphic, you'll notice that it is organized by page as listed in the registry, starting from left to right and then top to bottom. So for the very first page, we're going to start out with the centaur bow, which is pretty straightforward. You're going to be able to find these, of course, using an oddities runestone in any chamber in fortress battles. All right, next we have pixies, which have a Ministry of Magic classification of three, which means competent wizards should cope. I couldn't find exactly why pixies might be only available at night, other than the fact that they are tricksters and mischievous beings by nature, so perhaps it's easier to trick their prey at night. Next up we have centaurs, which really shouldn't honestly be in this book at all because they are considered or should be considered beings, but per their requests they have been classified as beasts. They didn't want to be labeled or classified with the likes of hags or vampires or various other dark beings. They have a Ministry of Magic classification as four, not just because they are kind of aggressive by nature, but also they've been given that classification because they should be treated with great respect. They have been given this classification along with merpeople and unicorns. Now keep in mind with this particular graphic, we have both pluses and bars. The pluses mean that both of these events must take place. So there must be at night with clear skies and then the slash means or. So you can either have that condition or they will be in foresty areas. This is because centaurs reside most naturally in foresty areas, most notably the dark forest. But additionally, centaurs are well versed in magical healing, divination, archery, and astronomy. So perhaps because they are so well versed in astronomy, it is required that the night be clear so that they can predict all sorts of different things with divination and whatnot. So again, we see them most notably at night with clear skies or in foresty areas. Next up we have vampires which are not in the Fantastic Beast books because they are indeed classified as beings, not beasts. So they don't have a classification or anything like that, but obviously according to many, many folklore, vampires are most notably found at night. That being because they cannot be out in the sun as it is dangerous to them. So of course we are going to find these vampires solely at night. Next up we have werewolves which are considered beasts even though they are humans that have transformed into this creature but they have been given a Ministry of Magic classification of five because werewolves do actively seek out humans over any other prey which is very unfortunate because most of these poor werewolves have no choice of being werewolves. So again, they have a level five Ministry of Magic classification, again, only in their werewolf form, I might add. So because these humans that do unfortunately transform into werewolves are affected by the full moon, which occurs at night, these of course are going to be found 
at night during the full moon. Now moving on to page two of the registry, we have the Horned Serpent Egg, which is also a fortress foundable. Again, going to be found with Oddity's runestone. So pretty straightforward on that one. Next up, we have Doxies, which are often mistaken for fairies, apparently, but they do have a Ministry of Magic classification of three, meaning most wizards should cope. And additionally, they are found at dawn, meaning early, early in the morning. Now, the only thing that I could find that could explain this early morning activity is that they prefer colder climates so perhaps because it's cooler in the morning they like to come out during the morning next up we have leprechauns which have a ministry of magic classification of three meaning most wizards should cope but these guys can be found at dusk or dawn during partly cloudy weather so those two things must happen partly cloudy and dawn or partly cloudy and dusk these guys live mostly in woodland or forest areas, which is why I'm kind of confused why Wizards Unite didn't add that as part of their spawning conditions. But alas, it is what it is. They are, however, particularly mischievous. So like the Doxy, perhaps when it's starting to get dark or when it's still kind of dark, that's when they like to spawn. Next up we have Urglings, which have a Ministry of Magic classification of four, meaning they are dangerous and it does require a skilled wizard to handle them. Urglings spawn in one of three conditions, at dusk, at Care of Magical Creatures landmarked areas, or at parks. Now, the reason being for this could be the fact that they particularly like children. And when I say they like children, I mean they like eating children. So perhaps it's a little bit easier for them to lure their prey, A, at parks where children hang out a lot, and at dusk when the sun is starting to go down and that's when people like to go missing, I guess. Additionally, it makes sense that they would spawn at a Care for Magical Creatures landmark area because they themselves are a magical creature. So watch out for those Urklings. Next up, we have the infamous Horned Serpents, which do indeed have a Ministry of Magic classification of five. These additionally spawn under one of three conditions, that being dawn, dusk, or rainy weather. Now there has been additional research to go into when these Horned Serpents might spawn, and that is in ExpectoGo and Pokefather's videos, which I will link up above. And I will also link a Wizards Unite Hub article about it in the description box below. It may have something to do with rainfall in your particular area. So check those out and see if your area is maybe one of those areas. The particular area that I'm in does not get enough rainfall to be qualified or classified as a horned serpent spawning area. I have never seen a horned serpent in the state of Utah, but I've also not gone to other places in the state of Utah where they do spawn. To confirm this or deny it. Anyway, go check those out and see if you can maybe find a place nearby you which does spawn horned serpents. In the meantime, I will probably never see a horned serpent unless there is an event going on. But horned serpents mostly come out during rainfall because they have an affinity to water. It has been noted that they spawn a lot near bodies of water. The founder of Ilver Morning School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, which is Isolt Sayer, I hope I'm saying that right, she befriended a horned serpent, which she found by her nearby creek. So keep that in mind when you're looking for these horned serpents. Next up we have dragons, which have a Ministry of Magic classification of five. And are you at all surprised? These dragons will spawn at any time as long as it is classified as sunny weather, and they are found in their respective regions. So of course, since the Antipodean Opali is native to New Zealand and will migrate to Australia, you'll find that the Antipodean Opali is in that region. Additionally, they do like to prey on mostly sheep, sometimes kangaroo, and occasionally humans. This might be why they spawn during sunny weather when everybody is outside, all of these animals as well. So keep your eye out for those Antipodean opal eyes. The Antipodean opal eye egg is only found in 10 kilometer port keys, special port keys, as well as during special events. So unfortunately they are a little bit harder to find, but again, you have a chance of getting them out of 10 kilometer port keys. So next up we have the Chinese Fireball, which as stated in the name is going to be found more in the Asian areas, specifically in China. And these guys like to prey on pigs and humans. So again, might be why they spawn mostly during sunny weather. The Chinese Fireball Egg is of course going to spawn in 10 kilometer port keys, special event port keys, and during special events. Next we have the Common Welsh Green, which is of course centered around whales. 
so it is going to spawn in mostly the European areas. These dragons particularly like sheep, but actively avoid humans whenever they can, unless they are being provoked by them. So again, might be why they spawn during the day. Next up we have the Peruvian viper tooth, which of course is going to originate from Peru, but you can find them in North and South America. These particular dragons will feed regularly on goats, as well as cows, but they are particularly aggressive towards humans. And in fact, the International Confederations of Wizards was forced to send in exterminators in the late 19th century to reduce the viper tooth population, which is insane. All right, for this page, we have the Azkaban escapee, and because it is a human and not a beast, we are not gonna find it in the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them book. However, these guys are dangerous, so be mindful of that. They are going to be found during rainy weather, perhaps because with every good jail escape movie, we are coupled with a storm. Now the storm probably helps to conceal them as they escape, so perhaps that's why they spawn more frequently. But nonetheless, that is when you'll find them the most active. Next up we have the Death Eaters, which again is not going to be found in the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them book. However, these guys can be found at night during the new moon. Now I couldn't exactly find a reason why Death Eaters would be spawning at a new moon. In fact, the research I found would suggest that they'd maybe be found at a crescent moon, whether that be a waxing or waning crescent moon, because on the night of the Hogwarts battle, there was a crescent moon when they attacked Hogwarts. So if any of you guys can tell me why they would be spawning at a new moon, perhaps because that would be the day before or after the Battle of Hogwarts, I am not entirely sure. So let me know what you find, but that is what I have found in my research. So at night during the new moon. The three-headed dog is one of those beasts that should be in the Fantastic Beast book, but alas, it is not in my copy. Perhaps in a newer edition it is, but under Cerberus or three-headed dog or even just dog or fluffy, I couldn't find it. So I don't know what its classification is. I couldn't exactly find it online as well, but these beasts can be found during overcast weather. Again, I'm not entirely sure why. According to my research, I feel like they should be spawning at night since as per Greek mythology, Cerberus is a guardian of the underworld. So dark, mysterious and everything. I don't know. But either way, you can find these beasts during overcast weather. All right, you guys, that was the last oddity that we needed to talk about. Real quickly though, Orange Wizards graphics do go over the time frames for things like dawn, dusk, day, night, and all the moon phases. So I wanted to go through those real fast just in case you're unsure of when the time frame for all of these are. So he has listed on here that dusk and dawn last approximately two hours at sunrise and sunset, so plus and minus one hour for each one of those. So sunrise is generally speaking at 7.30 a.m. and dawn in game lasts from 6.30 until 8.30 p.m. He makes a note that says, check your local sunset and sunrise times to figure out when dawn and dusk will start for you, because it may vary slightly. Please note that this may differ greatly when comparing summer to winter, keep that in mind as well. Additionally, day and night are the times that it is not dawn and it is not dusk. So of course, during the day and at night, as long as it's not dusk or dawn. And then in regards to moon phases, moon phases last approximately five days, so plus or minus two days from when that actually occurs. So for example, this month, the full moon happened on May 7th, so in game, the full moon is going to be from May 5th until May 9th. I know that already happened, but that's just as an example. And I'm certain that it's going to be the same for the new moon phase as well. And then of course, with the in-game weather, that is going to pertain to your local listing as well. So perhaps if it's raining in my region and not raining in your region, I'm going to see more Azkaban escapees than you would during that time. But if it's raining in your region and not in mine, I'm not expecting to see Azkaban escapees during that time. And with that, that is all I have for you on oddity spawn patterns. So let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, any additional information to explain things like why the three-headed dog is spawning 
during overcast weather instead of at night. I'd be really interested to see your guys' take on that. And of course, this graphic was made by Orange Wizard. I will have all of his social media links in the description box below, as well as a direct link to this particular graphic. All right, you guys, that is all I have for you on the patterns of Oddity Spawns. I know a lot of this is already known, but just in case you didn't know some of them, well, hopefully you do now. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Fantastic beasts, and where to find them?